Great. Thanks, Savani. <laughs> Great. Thank you both so much for joining us this morning. Um, like Paula said, it's, um, I'm just going to take you very briefly through our submission and the points that we decided we thought were quite relevant. Um, and then just some flag some questions that, you know, we've been mulling over, I suppose, in terms of whether or not we put in any supplementary submissions. Just to say maybe at the start that the framework has become quite a, compl a complicated one in terms of the Film and Publications Board's mandate um, and what they're trying to do. So we have the Film and Publications Act, um, which is the kind of overarching piece of legislation from 1996. Um, and that's been amended a number of times. At present, we have an, a Film and Publications Amendment Act that, sits, um, that has been signed into law, but is not yet currently in force. And that brings into place a number of quite significant changes to the regulatory framework um, and includes things like online content regulation. Um, so it, it tries to modernize the Film and Publications Act, but it, by doing so, it expands quite significantly the remit of the um, Film and Publications Board. So we've got this amendment act that's been brought, that's been signed into law, but not yet in force. Um, and in parallel to that, um, a few months ago, the Film and Publications Board published the draft, amend, uh, draft amendment regulations. Um, and that's what we, we have been invited to comment on. Um, and the amendment regulations are in effect trying to assist with the implementation of the Amendment Act. But in doing so, it goes even further um, and in some ways has some quite concerning or quite complex provisions that will have quite serious consequences, I think, because of the way in which they've defined certain terms or failed to define certain terms, which is one of our key concerns. So probably the biggest um, and core submission um, has been around the definition of what is it, of who constitutes a distributor. And because the amendment regulations don't contain a definition for distributor, um, for the word distributor as it stands alone, it has the potential to be um, read as any person who shares content on the internet being seen as a distributor. And that's been one of the most significant criticisms of the amendment regulations. Um, and the problem with that, I suppose, which is quite obvious to everyone, I'm sure, is that anyone who shares a, you know, a video of your child or your cat on YouTube or Facebook or whatever it might be, would potentially have to sign up with the Film and Publications Board, get prior classification. And that's obviously, one, just not, I think, what the amendment regulations are trying to achieve, but two, just completely impossible for the Film and Publications Board to be able to oversee or implement. So we, um, essentially, our submission was divided into six parts. We started with quite a broad discussion around the importance of the right to freedom of expression online um, and the need in line with the previous jurisprudence of the Constitutional Court to avoid what we refer to as prior restraints on publication. So to limit the, the role of the Film and Publications Board in kind of trying to oversee all the content before it goes out or trying to essentially censor any kinds of content um, unless it falls very squarely within its classification um, powers that it might have. Our second submission relates to the definition of distributor and I'll come back to that in a moment. Our third was around the requirement for registration as a distributor or exhibitor. The fourth was around the compulsory submission of publications um, and that um, you'll see ties in very squarely with the role of the, the press council and the ARB. The fifth one was around the application for the classification of games, which was also quite a serious concern for us. And then um, the last submission related to um, the submission of online content for classification. I just want to pause here and check whether anybody had any other um, had any questions at this stage before I take you very briefly through our submissions. I'm not going to take too much of your time today. And I think from my side. Not perfect. Huh? Um, so then just going into this issue of the definition of distributor, we point out uh, in our submission that the regulations draw a distinction between commercial online distributors, sorry, between commercial online distributors and non-commercial online distributors. So a commercial distributor means a distributor in relation to films, games, and publications 
which are distributed for commercial purposes using the internet. And a non-commercial distributor means any, basically any other person who, who distributes content using the internet or enables content to be distributed for personal or private purposes. The difficulty is that the, the amendment regulations don't define what they mean by, for commercial, by the phrase for commercial purposes. And whilst it might not seem like, you know, it might seem fairly obvious, I think for many of the members of the IAB, the challenge is that distributing content um, online is not a core part of the business. So people do it um, to market their business, to share things of interest or advisory purposes for their, mem for their customers and clients, um, but don't necessarily do it as a core or central activity of their business. And so for every person who posts content online, um, like our organization does using social media or on our website, essentially without um, a neater or tidier definition or a clearer definition, I suppose, of for commercial purposes, we would also have to submit all of that content to the Film and Publications Board before we were allowed to post it on our website or on um, our social media channels. Um, <clears throat> so it's one of the things we point out it's un is that it's unclear whether commercial purposes must be the primary intention for a commercial online distributor or whether this would include any content that becomes um, commercially viable after having been distributed. And we make quite a, a strong call for the Film and Publications Board to make that point expressly clear. Um, the second point we make is that the use of the term non-commercial online distributor is not used in either the Film and Publications Act or the Amendment Act that's been promulgated. And so it's the first time that this concept of non-commercial distributor is brought into the, is brought into the amendment regulations. Um, and our concern is that while the Film and Publications Amendment regulations have a definition of the word distributor alone, this idea of non-commercial where you use it for private or personal purposes really shouldn't fall within any contemplation of the Film and Publications Board. It should only be for where it is for a commercial activity. And so we make the submission that the, the terminology needs to be clearly defined and consistently used um, to ensure that the mandate of the Film and Publications Board isn't impermissibly overbroadened for them to be able to search or, or to oversee content that's really for private purposes. Our second submission then relates to the issue of registration as a distributor or exhibitor. Um, and we note that as the draft regulations currently read, and in the absence of a definition of the term distributor, it appears that any person or entity that distributes films or games would be required to register with the Films and Publications Board. And we know that practically this would require all creators of video content to undergo quite onerous registration requirements. Now, the definition of film is very broad. It could include a very, you know, quick video that you take, something you post on TikTok, for example, or Instagram. Um, it could include, it, it, it's any kind of a depiction of moving images, basically, which is ultimately what the definition comes down to. So again, this ties into our previous submission, which is really around the idea that we need to make very clear who a distributor is, because that will very neatly circumscribe the ambit of the amendment regulations. And without that definition, um, it, it falls to be quite overbroad and quite vague. Just to flag that we have had a consultation with the Film and Publications Board um, after the, the initial submission process closed. Um, and they were very receptive to the submission around needing to define the term distributor and needing to narrow the ambit of who would need to, uh, who would be required to make, to submit content for uh, prior classification. So I think this is something that we will see a change in um, after, um, in, in the next iteration of the amendment regulations. Um, we also note that the registration requirements are quite onerous. So even for people whose commercial activities fall within the scope of, of what is intended by this, where your commercial activities are, in, are to distribute films or games, um, the nature of the information sought by the Film and Publications Board is, deals with compliance with all laws in South Africa. It deals with the maintenance of appropriate tax affairs. So it, it delves into issues that fall quite well outside of the scope 
that the Film and Publications Board would ordinarily be concerned with. Um, and again, when we discussed this with the Film and Publications Board during our consultation, it was noted to us that there were really two schools of thought on this. Some members of the, of the drafting team felt that it should just be, you know, the registration proceeding should be quite narrow and quite circumscribed. Others felt that it should be um, a little bit more onerous and more challenging um, in order for, for registration to be possible. Um, and so I think it's useful that we've made the submission because I think given that there are these two schools of thought, um, it is possible that we may be able to sway the narrative in favor of, of the grouping that favors a less onerous registration uh, proceedings. Our third submission dealt then with the issue of uh, deals with regulation six of the draft regulations um, and deals with the compulsory submission of publications. Um, in, in, in some basically regulation six provides that the compulsory submission of publications is required by section 16.2 of the Film and Publications Act, does not apply to members of the press council or the advertising regulatory board. So, it, so there's an exemption provided for having to provide content to the Film and Publications Board if you're a member of um, either the press council or the, or the ARB. However, this exemption only applies to publications which excludes by its definition um, films or games. So that means that even if you're a member of the press council or the ARB, you would still have to submit any film, any video content um, or any game that you might want to upload uh, on your website or on social media um, to the Film and Publications Board for prior classification. Um, in this regard, we've had some discussions with both the Press Council and the ARB, and they agree that this distinction between publications, so written publications on the one hand, and films and games on the other is quite an irrational distinction. Um, there's no reason that one category of publication should be um, exempted whilst the other's not. Um, and so in this regard, we've called our submission is really just to echo what has been said by the Press Council and the ARB, which is that the definition or the application of Regulation 6 in providing this exemption to the Press Council and the ARB should include all written publications, films and games, um, and shouldn't be exclusive on that point. Um, then Regulation 11 is the next submission which we commented on, um, and that deals with the application for the classification of games. And this was an interesting one because um, this is really quite a concerning provision um, in terms of the amendment regulations. Um, it sets out the application, so Regulation 11 sets out the application procedure for the classification of games. Um, but what it does is it goes well beyond what's provided for in the Act, uh, in the Amendment Act, and includes a number of incredibly onerous requirements um, for before a, ga a game can be, will be permitted by the by the former publications board to be sold. So, for example, the draft regulations require the submission of a written report confirming that the game does not and will not contain any explicit sexual conduct, um, other things like um, an act which is degrading to human beings, um, conduct which constitutes incitement of or encourages harmful behavior, explicit if infliction of certain forms of violence and the explicit uh, presentation of extreme violence or explicit sexual conduct. So essentially what I think the Film and Publications Board is trying to do is sanitize the games that we're seeing currently sold in South Africa. Now our issue here is not that you should be able to put an age classification on game as nature, but rather if you don't, if you, if your game contains any form, any um, explicit violence or sexual conduct, for example, you will not be able to, you will not be able to get the necessary approvals from the Film and Publications Board to sell your game at all, even with the age restriction that might be attached to it. And that's just not permitted by the legislation. Um, there's nothing in the legislation that says that gay films and games can't contain any violence or any sexual conduct. It just provides that it needs to have an appropriate classification regime. 
um, and that's something that we've um, pushed back on in the submission and suggested that the amendment regulations need to be aligned with the legislation um, and that this be dealt with appropriately. <clears throat> The, the concern with this also is that the terms used regarding games are quite are quite broad and quite vague. So it talks about emotional, dis, uh, you know, the um, it, it, the the game shouldn't have content that causes any kind of serious emotional distress um, to the player. Now, that's an incredibly subjective consideration, I think, um, and one that would vary quite significantly from person to person. And again, it's just not contemplated in the legislation. Um, so again, it's something that we've suggested needs to be clarified and more narrowly circumscribed. Interestingly, the draft regulations with regard to games also provide that games must include mechanisms to remove the bars or impediments preventing players from graduating to more advanced levels or advancing further. Now, that kind of, it's quite a strange requirement because most games, I think, by their nature will have some sort of bars to you be able to proceed to the next level in, in the game. It's just naturally how the game works, um, I think. So for you to be able to have to remove all these bars and impediments from progressing is just a very strange requirement. Again, when we spoke to the Film and Publications Board about this, their response was that it's really to kind of limit the emotional anguish that people feel from not being able to advance in games. But um, I, I think that it's something that will probably have to be taken out of the next iteration of the regulations. And then our last submission, which is one of the kind of most concerning aspects of this is around the submission of online content for classification. And this is dealt with in regulation 16 of the draft regulations. Um, and regulation 16 provides that any person other than a member of the press council or the advertising regulatory board who has been issued with a registration certificate by the FPB as a distributor of a publication, film or game, must submit such publication, film or game for classification. Now this goes back to the initial point that we made that in the absence of a definition of distributor, every person who publishes content online has to get um, prior classification basically before that content can be can be made available on an online platform. Um, so we make the point that um, it appears um, that this is an unjustifiable restriction of the right to freedom of expression and access to information um, and needs to be addressed. And it can be very neatly addressed just by circumscribing the term distributor to make clear that it's not members of the public, but really applies to um, really applies more broadly, sorry, more narrowly to uh, persons who distribute this content for commercial purposes. Um, and then lastly, we make the point that the provision should make clear that it only applies to content that must be submitted for classification in terms of the act. Um, there's no, in our view, as we've set out in the submission, there's no basis to require distributors to submit content if that content does not include any material that is subject to classification. So currently the way it reads is that even if you define the term distributor more narrowly, for those persons or entities that, that do constitute commercial distributors, um, they will have to submit all content, even if it's completely innocuous content, even if there's no content containing any forms of um, sexual conduct or any type of other content, everything will have to go to the Film and Publications Board for classification prior to, be, to it being put online. And this is an incredibly onerous requirement. And given the limited resources and capacity of the Film and Publications Board, I think will take quite a long time for them to be able to review all the content that's submitted. Um, and that's one of the serious concerns in terms of the turnaround time is, as, how to quick, as to how quickly they'll be able to respond to these requests for classification. So those were our kind of core submissions. The one additional submission that we discussed but ultimately didn't deal with was around the registration requirements for internet service providers. Um, and I'm not sure if that's relevant to any of you, but a number of other entities ultimately did put in quite comprehensive submissions on um, the registration and prior classification requirements for internet service providers. Um, our concern when we started the conversation was about 
the breadth of the definition of an internet service provider. So any person who basically who provides access to the internet um, or access to internet services, which goes beyond, you know, kind of just conduits, but also starts to deal with hosts of internet services, um, which is part of the concern. Um, but if that is something that's relevant to any of you, I'm happy to discuss that part further, um, even though it didn't ultimately go into our submission. So I'm going to take a pause there and see if there are any specific issues um, that have come up for you that you've identified in your organizations that you would like clarity on in terms of how these regulations apply to you, or if there are any additional issues that you've perhaps identified that you think might be relevant um, and that we should be dealing with in supplementary submissions, um, which we're still allowed to put in until the end of Monday. Um, nothing from our side. I'll, I'll chat to Rian about this and see how, if he has any thoughts on this um, or anything extra, and I'll, I'll give that feedback to you. Thanks, Julia. Perfect, thank you so much, Julia. Yeah, also nothing from my side. Thanks, Peter. Uh, thanks, Avani. Just maybe one question. Firstly, thank you for summarizing that. That uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very good, succinct representation of the challenges. Um, uh, uh, is there a view of now what that would mean now from the agency standpoint? Uh, because now, uh, as a client, I think now some of the content production, the publication, could be defined as being done in a house. Mm -hmm. uh, is there regional requirement now for agencies to be registered or um, 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 approved before they can actually not, not uh, tender for any form of work in relation to other creation or publication of content? That's a great question. I think that's something that's not entirely clear to me from the regulations. I think if you're not the one who's putting actively placing the content on an online platform, then no, there would be no requirement for you to, to register in this regard. Um, that would, so ultimately it would depend on who is the party who's actually publishing the information, who's putting it out in the public domain. If that's something that you do, as the regulations currently read, then yes, you would have to register with the Film and Publications Board. But I think that's something that might change in future drafts of it, because it's just so impractical and um, unwieldy for them to manage every agency, every content producer, um, every piece of content, regardless of whether or not that content needs to be subject to classification. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's a two, two part answer. One is whether or not you're the actual publisher of the information and two, whether or not, um, whether or not I think the, the amendment regulations might still change to narrow their scope a little bit more. Okay, thank you. Because I think for me, the, the part that I'm still a bit hazy on is the definition of publishing. Mm -hmm. There's the actual act of publishing, which is now, number three, now working on the platform and deploying it, mm -hmm. versus being the actual now, owner of mm -hmm. the content that's going to be published. And, and there's a more, in some instances, it could be the same entity. In other instances, there could be multiple stakeholders involved from you know, the platform owner you know, to the actual publisher of the content to the actual copyright owner of the content. Um, mm. um, I guess we'll have to find out you now how that plays, if those regulations come in play, and how that basically would require then all those various stakeholders now to have the necessary, I guess, pre-approval before they can even basically look at now scheduling any form of content. Yeah, because if you if you do have to get the pre-approval, then there's um, it's a multi-stage process. The first is to register with the Film and Publications Board mm -hmm. as a distributor of content, as a publisher or distributor of content. And then the second is to then seek classification of that content before it goes, goes out to the public. So it's quite an onerous process um, and not, not something that I think is quite practicable in most circumstances where you're quite pressed for time to get content out quite quickly, I imagine. Um, so that's a really, I think that's a really interesting point and maybe something, Paula, we want to put in the supplementary submission on mm. just to clarify the role of agencies um, and the definition of, of pub, you know, just the definition of the word publish um, yeah. in terms of, because currently it's a very broad definition of the word publication and a very broad definition of the word distribute. So you would fall within the definition of distribute, even though I don't think the amendment regulations are intended to treat you as a distributor of content for, for the former publications board's purposes. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think maybe Paul, if you're happy with that, we can just do a short mm -hmm. submission. Mm 
on that. I think, so. I think it's important. And then maybe also just to note that um, obviously there's the prescribed you know, regulation, but th then there's also contracts between all the different stakeholders that might infer differently. So I suppose we need to acknowledge it in the code or to understand that, but then also mm -hmm. for each brand or agency to understand if a contract supersedes that just between your stakeholders. So if, for example, in your contract with your agency, Bruno, that there was something written that said that they didn't take liability for that act, then that's just something that would need to be dealt with with, with the stakeholders. Would that be correct, Avani? Um, yeah, so, so they wouldn't have the option of being able to, I mean, okay. ultimately, they have to comply with the law, okay. if, you know, depending on their, their role in publishing the content. Hmm. But I suppose some people might try and obviate that requirement and, you know, find ways around having to comply with it. Um, but then they would be non-compliant with the with the regulation. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Thanks for that question, Bruno. That's really that's really important. Sure. Great. Yeah. Um, Paula, that's it from my side. I don't know if there's anything else you want to raise. Um, no, I think it's just great to have this opportunity to, to discuss questions. And I know we've consulted with quite a few people and fantastic to have the open dialogue, you know, with the, with the Film and Publications Board. And it does sound that they, they are listening and that a lot of the other bureaus have similar concerns. So I think there are quite a few responses. So I think about 50% of our response is duplicated, um, hopefully for effect and influence mm -hmm. in, in some of the other bureaus. So yeah, hopefully that will create the changes we need. Yeah, I um, hope so too. Have they do given? You, oh, sorry. Sorry, ladies. Do you know? Do you know whether now? Um, um, because from a publishing standpoint, there they, they are standalone third parties you now, like, like basically in the form of basically local publishers you now. You know, um, whether the media owners of basically you now um, websites, basically you now uh, channels. What is the position of uh, Facebook Africa or the Google team locally? Uh, um, are they doing their own lobbying in parallel? Are they integrating with you and have shared their, now their, their approach in terms of the way they look at regulation and, and framework? Yeah, so I've had engagements with um, the Facebook team, for example. Um, they, they belong to what's known as the South African Communications Forum. Uh -huh. And they've put in a, a, quite a comprehensive submission um, around basically what their role is and how how... So one, what their individual role is for content that they place online, and then two, for their users, basically. Um, and this big question about whether they should be treated as internet service providers with all the registration requirements that come with it, um, or whether they fall outside the scope of that. Um, so they've pushed back quite strongly on the regulations as well. Um, and I think, from my understanding, they've also had, since the first initial submissions were made, they've also had follow-up engagements with the Film and Publications Board um, through the Communications Forum um, around some of the changes that they want to see. And it'll be interesting during the oral hearings to see whether they still come out strongly or at what points they persist with. I'd be happy um, if you're interested for me, uh, if you're interested, I can share that submission with you as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's public on the the communications forum website so you can just see some of the issues that they've Thanks. raised that should be great thank you yeah um avani you alluded there to um, the oral hearings have have they as the fpb des, like delineated the the next steps or timeline for for reverts or discussions so in earlier presentation that they did before they extended the deadline for submissions they were talking about finalizing this process by january 2021 but I'm not sure whether that will be possible because they haven't formally called for oral hearings yet. And we're already, okay. you know, partway through October. Mm. So I'm not sure whether that's going to be possible given, I mean, I think they received quite a lot of submissions. Um, so I'm not sure if they're still working through it or yeah, I'm also a little bit sorry for them. I don't envy their position. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not entirely sure what the next steps or the timelines for the next steps will be. Okay. Thank you. Um, great. great. Thank you, Avani. Um, so next steps from our side, I think, is to have a look at that additional um, additional revert from Bruno. Um, are there any other bureaus that we had want to include? I think it's from us. I mean, who else would it apply to? Just us. Um, that's great. And then we would submit that on Monday and, and then just keep our members up to date on, on next steps.
Thanks, Ivan. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, you. If you've got, got any other questions, just you can email me on paula at iabsa.net, and then we can we can look at that. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank Thank you. Friday. Thanks. Thank Bye, Julia. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. And a better weekend. Yeah. Ciao. <laughs> Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.